I feel like this episode is just going to get real messy. I mean... There's a, there's a lot to talk about. There is, yes. There's a lot to talk about. Because, yeah. oh boy, there's a lot to this here video game. Yup. Yeah, there is. It's a whole lot. <laughs> Uh, but that's, we're we're gonna we're gonna dive through it as best as we can. Mm-hmm. So hello, welcome to this week's episode of the Seasonal Anime Checkup OVA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Al and Ladyum. Hello. This is episode number two, two, two. Whoa, all twos. All twos. Oops, all twos. Oops, all twos, indeed. So yeah, we're gonna we're talking about a, a video game that I feel like got real popular at the end of last year when a lot of people finally got to play it. Yeah. <laughs> well, the world the word of mouth really did wonders for this video game. Um, this is a game I played a Japanese demo of, and I was like, this doesn't seem that good. <laughs> 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 Which, granted, uh. Most of the demo, I think, was focused more on the gameplay of it, which is not is easily the worst part of the game. Oh, easily the worst part of the game. <laughs> and not really being able to understand the story was not didn't really help. So yeah. Uh, we are discussing this week Thirteen Sentinels Aegis Rim, mm-hmm. the latest game from uh, VanillaWare. Yes, as evidenced by. The one lady in the the cat suit with both her boobs and her butt sticking out. Yes, that's yep, yep. Yep, that is. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is them. That's Fidelaware. Yep. And also, naked people and robots. Oh yeah, there are naked people and robots. I know. I know that was a big like point of contention for a lot of people, like when they first see this game, because there's like, whoa, what's this? But as someone who's watched a lot of like mech stories i was just like yeah whatever who cares <laughs> well and i mean it's really not this isn't even a big that, deal <laughs> that noticeable after a while i was just like no eh. however there's actually a narrative reason for why that is yes surprisingly <laughs> <laughs> it's not just being all excited for naked people nope uh so yeah this game originally came out in Japan on November 28th, 2019. Originally supposed to come out in 2018 for both the PlayStation 4 and, God bless its soul, the PlayStation Vita. No, rip. Got delayed to 2019. The Vita version was canceled, mostly because the Vita, it just, just pour one out for your friend, the PlayStation Vita. Yep. Also, f- Sony for trying to, for, or for going to shut down the the stores for the Vita, the PSP, and the PS3. F- them. Yeah, f- that. Ugh. Big suckage. But yeah, that came out in 2019 in Japan. It came out on March 19th, 2020 in Australia. Oh, okay. Or I guess, no, actually that's Asia. Sorry. Um, So that would be like uh, foreign language versions, not English versions. And then worldwide elsewhere on September 22nd, 2020. Um, One of the big reasons for like that big delay in terms of like the US version was the fact that COVID-19 hit right as soon as like they were beginning to do voice recordings Mm -hmm. and they got they got one person's uh voice voice stuff done now is the the uh the voice actor who does Hijiyami um and then as soon as like that happened like yes sorry um as soon as that happened they had to shut down the studio and then basically everything else had to be done via like zoom calls wow which is wild. Yeah. But I would say, like, you know, for their credit, considering that a lot of the game would have had to have been done in that way, like, you can't really tell there's, like, a lot, like, a real big difference in voice quality Mm-mm. in terms of the, the voice recording. It so, sounds like, that's, fine. Yeah, so that is a, uh, that's a good thing to see. Mm-hmm. Considering, like, you could, I mean, look, doing audio over the internet is a paid in the butt. <laughs> you don't so, say. It is a testament to that they were able to to do all this and pull it off in a way that actually works and doesn't sound terrible. Yeah. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about the development of this video game first. Okay. Hey, did you know this was made by Vanillaware? 
What? There you go. Uh, apparently, the concept for this game originated in 2013, followed the, following the completion of Dragon's Crown. If you want more giant hammer homers, that's the game for you. Giant ones. Tired with spending so long at Fantasy Worlds, uh, director George Kame Kamitani wanted to create a science fiction story set in the time of his youth in the 1980s. He also wanted something on a much smaller scale. <laughs> <laughs> well... Yeah, I don't know that you pulled that one off, buddy. Kind of maybe uh, flew a little too close to the sun there. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. The concept for a story featuring multiple protagonists was drawn from the long-running television show Chukakusei Nikkei. It's a Japanese health show, obviously. Uh, Kamatane's original concept had seven or eight characters. <laughs> I think that expanded a bit. Yeah. But as the first artwork for the concept was published in 2013, he decided to increase the number to 13. This exponentially increased the, com the company's workload. Prior to incorporating mechas, the story revolved around young people with superpowers inspired by the TV drama series Nighthead, which again is another... Japanese television show from 1992. It's an anime. Due to lacking excitement and overt science fiction elements, he wrote, rewrote the premise. Kamitani based the narrative on the original video animation of Mega Zone 23. And he was originally planning to use the Jules Verne novel Two Years Vacation as inspiration. In the final project, the characters Renya and Megumi are based on the novel, novel characters Gordon and Cross. The narrative structure also drew inspiration from Western thriller fiction. In contrast to his work on Odin Sphere, where he had cre he created the overall story while other writers worked on the game scenario, Kamatane wrote the entire scenario of the game himself, both in and out of office hours. That's bad. Don't do that. Don't yeah, crunch don't, yourself. Don't do that. Over the course of three years, Kamatane chose to set the game in 1980s J Japan due to his own experience, his knowledge of the modern Japanese school system was limited, and the lack of mobile phones in that era allowed for more face-to-face -face conversations between characters in the game. <laughs> it's true. It's just funny. Yes. Uh, the original scenario timeline ran from the 1940s to the 1980s, but when Atlas took over the project, Kamatani expanded the scope into the near and distant future. Kamatani wanted to create a mecha theme story for a modern audience, as many of the most memorable genre works, Mobile Suit Gundam and Evangelion, were by that time several decades old. At one point, each of the 13 protagonists had 12 possible story paths, making for a total of 165 possible variations. Oh my god, no! Wilden. Due to the production timeline and the need to reveal the story mysteries, Kamatani had to cut a lot of the planned optional comedic and bonding scenes between characters. Several of the surviving routes went through extensive revisions, with some planned scenes such as a coffee shop location being cut, but a key surviving theme that came with its shoujo manga inspiration was romance. Each protagonist's storyline drew inspiration from a particular outside source, ranging from Japanese anime and manga to western movies and classical works of science fiction. Sekigahara's route originally had a shoujo manga-style romantic choice between Fuyasaka and Shinonome, but this was changed to make Fuyasaka the only choice. I think that that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. One of the core mysteries were the characters of Fuyasaka, Morimura, and Chihiro, who were different incarnations of the same character. Spoilers! With her design and portrayal <laughs> showing the alternating charms of different ages. Uh, this section of the plot, which was a key part of Goto's scenario, underwent major revisions late in production. Okino, created by Kamitame on Hirai's request for a unique character. I don't know who this other guy is. He's probably someone else they mentioned. Uh, for a request for a unique character was based on a soft-spoken character from Totemo Hijikata-kun, a 1980s manga series. The complex relationship between Hijiyama and Okino, was, which used both comedic and romantic elements, was inspired by the manga series Stop Hibari-kun, which is a 1981 manga series. <laughs> Uh, Kamitani cited several storylines as technically difficult to write, such as Takamiya's de detective theme narrative, Shinonome's amnesia plotline, and Ogata's train sequences. Amaguchi's story was the most straightforward and thus easiest to complete, with the dark tone of Yakushiji's narrative often left him depressed. Like we said, there's a lot to this. There's a lot, yes. There's a lot. Mm-hmm. Like... You know, you, you start up and you you see um, Fuyasaka with the, the mech. And you're like, huh, all right. And then you get, like, normal school days. And you, you think, this is what you're going to get. That is not what you're going to get. It is crazy. Bananas. It's wild. Yes. Uh, we did talk about how I think a lot of, like, uh, word of mouth 
really helped popularize this game mm-hmm. late last year. Yeah. And that's that's true in terms of sales as well. Oh, really? Um, so during its opening week in Japan, it only sold 34,200 units, debuting in fifth place on the charts. Uh, wow. These low sales were blamed by commentating on the game's blend of genres, difficult production, and releasing alongside other popular titles. Uh, while initial sales were low, positive word of mouth from both players and other industry figures caused sales to increase and resulting in stock shortages. It remained in the top 30 best-selling titles in January of 2020, with total physical sales of nearly 59,500 units. By this point, physical and digital sales had reached 100,000 units. And their fiscal report for... I guess Q2 of 2020... Uh, Alice said that 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim exceeded their sales expectations, and by January 2021, the game had sold over 300,000 copies worldwide, and that number had jumped to 400,000 by mid-March. Wow, so people really are just, like, hearing about it and playing it. Mm-hmm. Which like I think me. is it's a, it's a good thing, because I think on the outset of, like, if you just look at this game, it looks very weird and just kind of, like, you don't know what to make of it. Yeah. Because it is this blend of... Uh, you know, an adventure game and an RTS game. Mm-hmm. And you don't know exactly how those things mesh with each other, right. which in reality, this is an adventure game with some RTS stuff bolted on to the side of it. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. And I think, like, like I played that demo and didn't come away from it really, you know, positive. Um, but I started hearing more people talking about this game and, like, real positive license just being like, yo, you have to play this game. Like, there is some wild stuff in this game. Mm -hmm. So, like, I was hearing that from other people, from people on, like, Game of the Year stuff from last year, and then you eventually played it, and you were like, you need to play this game. Yeah. (laughs) Like, if there's anything that I know, this will be up your alley. And I was like, you know, all right, I will finally just, like, take the dive and see what's what with this game. I will tell you, if I had played this last year, it would have been on my Game of the Year list. Yeah, I think that's completely fair. But yeah, I was like, oh man, this is totally up, up, up Jared's alley. He's got to do this thing. And I, I just heard about it on the internet and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah. I'm going to play it. And then it was on sale one day and I was like, cool, I'm going to well, get this for like 30 bucks. I'm sure it also being a Vanillaware game probably at least piqued your interest a little bit because I know you're a fan of Odin Sphere. Yes. So. Yeah, um, it, it absolutely did. I was like, oh, okay. Um, cause I, I skipped, um, Dragon's Crown. Is that what it was mm-hmm. called? Um, mainly just cause I couldn't get over that, like, which character. I just couldn't. <laughs> it was. Her hammer homers are all out there. <laughs> God, it was excessive. Um, and so, like, at least that's a little bit dialed back here. Like, there's only, like, one character yeah. that's really like that. Not even, like, as bad as she was, but. No. Um. But yeah, I really, really love Odin Sphere, and so um, definitely was a a, a point in its favor. Mm-hmm. I figured that I would just deal with the mech stuff because I'm not really as into mechs. But turns out you don't really have to deal with the mechs all that much. Not really, no. <laughs> So it's fine. I mean, yeah, what where this game really shines is its story. Yeah. And like that's that's Oh boy. Oh. It goes places. Yeah, and I mean we were talking about it before we started recording. Like we can't go beat for beat on this because we would be here for days. Um There is a Wikipedia sub- synopsis. Ooh. That's like five paragraphs. So we may we could just dive into that and talk about stuff. Okay. Um and then eventually go back and just kind of go through some other stuff here and there. Because, like, uh, a lot of this game is the adventure game style where you are controlling each of, like, the 13 protagonists in the game. Mm-hmm. They all have their own interconnected stories that eventually you will, as you play through the game, you will be able to tell, like, okay, this part of the, this character's story is happening in this part. Mm-hmm. And then this character's happening over in this part and everything. This connects here and this connects mm-hmm. here. And, like, you don't have access to all, the, all of those at once. Like, you mm-hmm. eventually, you keep unlocking characters and then, you know, 
story will eventually get locked behind okay you need to view this character's specific story to unlock this next person part of this person's character story or you got to go do the the mech stuff yep and that Which, unlocks people's stories so there is a little bit of the story in the mech stuff but like it's kind of just here and there to like a little bit of flavor essentially and the the mech stuff is not great it is easily the weakest part of this game and yeah. i think even they kind of know that because like it's just like here you go, go do this thing, and then you really just want to go back to the story. Yep. <laughs> Let's yeah. be real. I mean, put it on easy, throw out some sentry guns, get back my, to the story. Uh, my eventual strategy was to put it on easy, use sent or sentry guns, and also the interceptors. Yes, the interceptors were very, very helpful. So I just had, I would have a, at the end of the game when I was getting through just all the, the battles I had to do, because that's basically all I had left. It was just like, I had my team that, there was three of them that had sentinel guns, or sentry guns, and then the other three had interceptors and just like, go ham. Yep. Uh, that also does lead to like some performance issues with this game, which is kind of unfortunate where if there's just uh, so much stuff happening in the, the fights and just like so many explosions happening, the game's just like, whoa! we gotta slow it down <laughs> yep it starts to really chug in some of those later battles when there's just like so much stuff happening yeah i was like oh boy i hope this game does not crash <laughs> but yeah yeah that's basically all you can say about the the fight stuff it's kind of just like it's here it exists it, it explains why you're kind of what you're doing in terms of like why you have to get into robots and stuff and fight mm -hmm. but other than that it's just it's there. <laughs> That's basically it. But like you said, the meat and potatoes of this video game is the story. Mm -hmm. And if we're going off this Wikipedia thing, this is going to be essentially a very, very condensed version of the main plot. Uh, we'll eventually go over some, like, maybe some other stuff here and there, and some reveals and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but just keep that in mind. If you haven't played this like this is a very condensed version like i think uh my playthrough was like 25 to 30 hours i don't remember what mine was and let me tell you i also took notes yes you did good I was... god i needed to keep track of everyone and that was a very confusing in the very beginning by the end of it you kind of know who everyone is and yeah. their motivations and everything so like, you don't have to go that far but like yeah i have seven pages of notes and I was following of just like things that was happening notes. with people. <laughs> yes. So like, there's like it's things that are happening with people, and also like my question is like, the f going on? <laughs> I did feel very good of like there was quite a few times where I I, I got things right, mm -hmm. and I was very happy with that. And then there was other times I was like, oh, okay, that didn't go exactly as I thought it would. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so let's dive into the Wikipedia version of this story. There okay. is going to be spoilers, of course, because that's how this goes. Yes. Uh, in 1985, Japan, that's where we start this. Uh, uh, Jiro Kurabe, Yori Fuyasaka, and Shu Amaguchi experience shared dreams, either of themselves fighting previous wars against the Kaiju, who are the invading forces coming to blow everything up and fight them, blah, 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 or of what appear to be older versions of themselves in the future. Mm-hmm. They are later seen by Morimura, who Kurabe learns is administrating an, an unknown medication to some students. Uh, that is Chihiro Morimura. There's their nurse yep. in the school. Um, Kurabe is referred to in Morimura's notes as Juro Izumi, an identity he cannot remember. Uh, Yuki Takimiya is blackmailed by SIU member Tetsuya Ida into monitoring students at Sakura High School. She is monitoring them because they want to know who's Sentinel pilots? Mm hmm Right. Uh, Yuki's friend, Natsuno Minami, finds a robot called BJ, assumed BJ! to be an alien. BJ is an AI robot from 2105 searching for its Sentinel, which is Sentinel number 17. Yes. God, I love BJ so much. He's BJ good, is such a good, a good character, boy. and like I want like a stuffed BJ or something because he's <laughs> he's just so cute. Uh, Megami Yakashiji from 2025 is approached by Fluffy, which is a cat who says he can bring back Izumi if he she shoots select if she shoots select people with a special gun because 
her and Juro Izumi in 2025 had were in a relationship with each other, and then he gets his memories wiped, and they go back to 1985, and she's like, ah, <laughs> panicking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's got to shoot the witches. Mm-hmm. Uh, Renya Goto and Ryoko Shinanome both work for the SIU. Is that true? Wait. I feel like who? Goto is like the most free agent of all of them. I don't know why they... That that seems... I don't know. Yeah, I... Shinanome, of course. Shinanome does work for them. Goto, I think, just kind of just does whatever the f*** he wants. Yeah, I, I, I think that's suspect. Yeah. Wikipedia was suspect? No. <laughs> no. Uh, blah, 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 blah. They end up recruiting Tomi Kisaragi from 2025 after the demos attack her time period, apparently. At a later point in time, Amnesiac uh, A. Sekigahara wakes up next to the, to the murdered Shihiro Morimura and is ended up pursued by SIU operatives. In 1945, uh, Kitaro Miura, I have to remember everyone's first name because they don't put them in here for some reason. They're just like, here's last names uh and his little sister chihiro live with tamao kirabe and are friends with takatoshi hijiyama and newcomer kiriko doji quote unquote later revealed to be the cross-dressing who could it be sukasa okino yep also, these are like split into like protagonists and other protagonists. So I was like, wait, it's which which list are you on? <laughs> uh, shortly after Okido takes Hijiyama to 1985, the Demos attack 1945. Tamal vanishes upon being killed, quote unquote. Goto kidnaps Chihiro, and Mira accidentally travels to 1985 using a Sentinel. That's all stuff that happens. That's all yeah. like beginning things that happen in the prologues for most of these characters. Again, a lot happens in this story. Yep. Yep. It's, I think it's also interesting to to note that like, you know, part of this game does like take place in 1945, mm-hmm. and it is during World War II. Yeah, where some of these characters are thinking like, oh yeah, we're gonna use the Sentinels to to fight back against the uh, the Americans and the the Allies and everything. Yeah, and it's just like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, and I mean like you have actual scenes where they're like, oh, we're in 1985 now, and we've read history books, and oh god, what happened? Mm-hmm. Like, they dropped nukes on us. That's what I'm thinking. Is like, can you imagine going from 1945 to 1985, reading a history textbook and reading that like the country that you were fighting dropped nuclear bombs onto your country and just literally obliterated people who were civilians? Mm-hmm. Like, can mm-hmm. you imagine that? No. <laughs> That's so messed up. Especially I mean, like. You- I, I would argue that dropping the nuclear bombs in the first place was so messed up. Yeah. But like, that is a very, very, like, when, when um I think it was Hiji, uh, he, was it Hijiyama who was having that? Or was it Mura who was having that conversation? I, I think they both kind of had that conversation that, at one that point. That realization type yeah. thing. Um, and I, I, was, I had to, like, stop for a second and think about it, like, that has got to be, like, really, really traumatizing. Mm-hmm. And especially, like, given, given like, that they time-traveled from 45 to 85, um, like, you don't know what happened to everybody that you cared about at all. <laughs> it's awful. Anyway. It's a real mess. I mean, especially because, like, they, they go in thinking, like, oh, yeah, we got the super weapon. We're going to turn the tide of the war. And this is like, ah. Yeah, nah. about that. <laughs> that didn't happen. Um, I like how the second paragraph just completely undercuts everything because it just reveal- it's one of the big reveals immediately. Oops. Oops. Uh, it is gradually revealed that rather than time periods, the protagonists inhabit five different areas or sectors which replicate a specific era. Mm-hmm. So like that's that's one of the big kind of reveals later in the game. That yeah, was something you get that I, pretty late in the game. That was something I kind of eventually figured out because you wouldn't if you're time traveling, you're not going to say you're traveling to a sector. Mm-hmm. You'd be like, oh, we're going to like a time period or this period. Like the way they kept saying sector was like, I was like, this doesn't seem right. Like this seems like they're just going from like one place to another and they're in just a centralized area. And then they're like, yeah, that's exactly what's happening. I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Check one off for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, in the real world, 2188, a nanomachine virus, of course, ravaged the Earth, leaving only 15 individuals living in a space colony. These survivors were the 13 protagonists, Okino and Tamao, who would eventually be cloned into the current versions as successors to humanity. The group devised a project or plan called Project Ark, which would send their DNA and records of Earth's life and history across space on a self-replicating spacecraft. The events of the game are happening on a distant planet. The probe terraformed and the simulation housing and training their minds is otherwise populated by human life AIs. You got all that? Because that's exactly what's happening in this game. <laughs> Man, I swear, like, the first time, I don't remember if it was um, Natsuno or if it was Miura the first time, but, like, the first time you see one of them, like, talking from space, I was like, excuse mm. me? I think it's the, the Miura Natsuno one, and you're just yeah. like, what the f*** is going on? Yeah, like, that was kind of my response. I was just like, um, why are y'all in space? And, why are like, they these older versions of you? Yeah, what is happening? What is actually, what's going on here? I like that Mira had like a, a selfie angle going on with Yeah. His. <laughs> Got his webcam uh propped up right. Yep. Good. Uh Project Arc and its population are managed by Universal Control, an AI which erases inconsistencies and falsifies information to preserve the simulation. The twenty one eighty eight Shinonome Dissolution with Humanity secretly implemented the Daimos code. This would cause Shikishima, a mega corporation that exists in all sectors, to produce the Daimos. Once the Daimos invades all five sectors, the simulation resets to 16 years prior to protect universal control, with the 15 humans losing their memories of the events, trapping them in an endless loop. Some characters survive loops with their memories intact using Sector Zero, a non-spatial area at the system's core. Okay, did you get all that? Because that's also <laughs> a lot of big things here. <laughs> um, so yeah, outside of the, like, the protagonists and the, the main characters, like, Everyone is just is not real. They're fake mm -hmm. people who were made up by the AI and everything. Um, yeah, like um, Iorian, I think it was Tomi's friend, like the the one that um, they were always hanging out with. Yeah, she was just not real. That was so. That was really messing with me because, like, by the end of it, I was like, "What is going to be her deal? Like, is she going to end up being like the mastermind behind this?" Because like everyone else has something going on, and she's just like the one normal character. And I was like, "There has to be a twist with this." <laughs> and the twist is that she doesn't real, which I was like, eh. "But like, I was expecting some wild shenanigans to happen at the very end because like it just seems so weird that she was just always around and just like this normal person." Mm -hmm. And then there's like the the part where like. Uh, she gets trapped in 2025, but then she shows back up in 85, and everyone's like, oh, you're back. And she's like, what are you talking about? I've been here. Nothing happened. And it's like, has no memory of ever, like, time traveling with them and anything. And this is, like, one of those, like, hmm. But, yeah, like, going up to the end of the game, I was just waiting for, like, what's her big reveal going to be? And the, the big reveal isn't, there isn't the big reveal with her. Well, She's just an, a normal person. I mean, considering the big reveal with Sheba, like, it makes sense that you would be a little suspect. This game basically makes you constantly question everything. Yes, it does! So, I was like, there constantly is that. questioning things. Mm -hmm. It's wild. Um, and also, so, like, there is these, all these sectors are basically, like, little, like, 30 kilometer diameter uh like just domes yep that are just enclosed spaces that if you go too far you basically run into the parts of the spaceship and basically parts that you're not supposed to be in mm -hmm. um but essentially the way the the ai works is that like if you get too far it'll basically kind of like reset you and just like like oh no you're supposed to be going this way and just make like gives everyone false memories of like oh they went to this place and everything they went and traveled over here and done all this stuff yeah, I love that, um, like, Amaguchi takes Yuki, like, on a date out to the edge. Yeah. <laughs> which is great. But then they also had the conversations, like, oh, yeah, this is, like, what my summer was like. And then they realized, oh, God, we had the same experience of summer. What? <laughs> so, and, like, they're trying to convince themselves, like, it's just normal. Because, like, oh, yeah, every kids just have similar summer experiences, right? And they're just like, no, this is way too convenient. Like, it's the exact same. Yeah. But yeah, right. the, the, the date over to the edge of the dome was pretty funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, hey, you want to see something cool? Look at this spaceship. <laughs> uh, in one loop, 
Izumi and Morimura, Morimura escape to Sector Zero, returning to the Reset 2089. They attempted to change events by destroying Shigashima, but failed. Izumi was imprisoned and dubbed Prisoner 426, breaking free in 2105 when the Deimos appeared. Learning that the Deimos are summoned by nanomachines in the 13 pilots, Izumi attempted to kill all who would go on to become pilots, but Morimura in intervened. In the 2025 of that loop, Ida, in an, an earlier version of Amaguchi, was in love with Kisaragi when she was killed by the Deimos. In the next loop, Ida created an android in Kisaragi's image and implemented her copied memories. Ida also transplanted, Izumi, transplanted Izumi's memories into another android for interrogation. 426 switched bodies with the Kisaragi android and escaped. He would eventually transfer his mind into another android in the form of Tamao Kurabe in 1985. <laughs> Discovered by the SIU and suffering heavy damage, he encountered Karabe and transferred his mind into Karabe's nano machines, taking the form of Shiba, a person only Karabe can see. Fluffy is another form that 426 takes only that, that only Yakushiji can see, manipulating her to further his plans. It's so messed up. So much. I I loved um when when you got the, the reveal with Shiba and um like all you put in the doc was tapes in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yep, yep. Because, like, it, it, it's, um, like, well established pretty early on that Juro um, Karabe is, like, really, really into, like, um, film. Like, he likes mm -hmm. to, to watch movies a lot. Um, and he's always borrowing tapes because mm -hmm. um, it's, it's the 80s. Um, and, like, that is a regular thing like he's talking about the tapes he's talking about going to like watch them with his friends he's talking about the video store that he likes to go to like that's just his thing um and then you find out that like shiba has essentially been manipulating him using the tapes it was like ah! mm -hmm. no also no one can see him so everyone just thinks he's crazy and talking to himself the whole time yep yep <laughs> <laughs> Which makes sense because, like, there's a very early scene when uh, Kirabe summons the Sentinel mm -hmm. when he meets. Uh, Mira. He bumps into Mira and they and he inadvertently summons the Sentinel. And um, Sheba's like, all right, well, now we can't have you remembering that. Yeah. Which, like, it felt weird at the time, but it was one of those things you just completely forget about. Because it's like, oh, whatever, I was going on to the other stories, da 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 Yep. <laughs> but, like, you look back on it, it's like, oh, yeah, of course, that's why that makes sense now. <laughs> and then it becomes like, oh, yeah, the video store that I really like had an explosion. <laughs> explosion, quote, unquote. Yep. Like, that's a thing. And it's like, oh, that is not what happened. Why don't you remember what happened? Mm-hmm. There's a reason he doesn't remember what happened. It's wild. Yeah, the whole reveal was really, really good. Mm -hmm. It was really good. <laughs> yeah. Because I didn't see that coming at all. Mm -mm. And apparently, like, his name in Japanese is some kind of, like, pun. Hmm. Um, so that's interesting. But, um, yeah. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember reading that. The, the one good thing about this game is that, like, it gives you, like, very detailed notes about like every character and you'll keep getting unlocking stuff about them that like fills in like okay this is what this person was doing in this time or you know here's some more information about them it's like very good to reference be like okay i need to remember what this person is doing and everything and it's like here you go yeah here's a ton of inf here's a giant info dump for you if you need it and it's like thank you thank you video game thank you <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it knows that it's convoluted. It knows that, like, it, it you need has a that. lot happening. You need that. And so it's very, very helpful that they're like, yeah, we recognize that there's a lot happening here. Here, have some little little bits of info. Mm -hmm. It's very helpful. Uh, each playable character has the dedicated intertwining story arcs, revealing more about the individual pieces of the plot. Ida, obsessed with re with reviving his version of Kisaragi, now existing as the the idol Miyuki Inaba, wants to perpetuate the loops. Which that's a wild part where like here's this idol who just keeps con contacting Shu, and he's just like, "Oh, this is weird and everything." Contacting him on his TV. Yeah, just via TV. <laughs> oh, Shu. I feel like there was like five different characters like this is Shinanome in disguise in my notes. And yeah. then eventually I was just like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Idol likes to sing contacting Shu who in the future goes by Tetsuya Ida. This is just Tomi. Yep, it's Tomi. 
And I was like, oh, big brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because she was like her big supporter online when she was mm-hmm. singing. And, um, or she, when he was Ida, he had, he had uh, a big old crush on her. Mm-hmm. But yeah, idol version's like, hello, I want to contact you through my TV. Please help. Ah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and she, and she's the one who like unlocks part of the the sector to like s- let him see like hey things are not as as they seem he's like yeah. uh oh <laughs> yikes uh Ida sabotages the sentinel forces in the current loops 2065 by creating a virus and tricking shinonome into implanting it into the sentinel network which heavily damaged the memories of shinonome sekigahara and kurabe get out of here bug <laughs> Disenchanted with further loops, Morimura wants to trigger Operation Aegis. This action shuts the Deimos' path to universal control, but will trap them in a devastated world for the rest of their lives. Ida is eventually killed, first by a briefly lucid Shunanome prior to losing all her memories, then finally by Sekigahara after learning that Sector Zero will be erased in the next reset and trap humanity in the simulation forever. Also, Ida's an android now. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah, there's another note, and your your dog's is like, who's an android now? <laughs> like, yep. Because somebody was revealed Fair. to be an android, and you're like, oh no, now now I gotta figure out who's gonna be an android. Fair. <laughs> it was great. I loved seeing that in your notes. This is a so very wild sentence. Morimura is killed by Chihiro. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Who houses the personality of the original Professor Morimura. So this is, okay. Morimura, as we, they're referring to the teacher version is killed by Chihiro, who they are referring to as the child version, which is a clone of her mm-hmm. that she made so that she could back up her memories. And the original version of her is Professor Morimura, who was living in 2188 and part of this whole project to, to boot. Wild. <laughs> so wild. And then Fuyusaka is also her. Yeah. Uh, Izumi, initially hostile, reveals his wish to help the group fight the Deimos, giving them nanomachines through his various forms and manipulation of Yakushiji to prepare their bodies for sentinel control. So he basically uses Yakushiji to shoot in new nanomachines so they have uh, better control over the sentinels and everything Mm -hmm. and are ready to fight. Also, he helps uh, break out Ogata from his, like, time loop that he's in from Okino to, like help him learn like how to like get out of the time loop and everything because he basically gets Jakushiji to come and help him and also yeah. because he tells him that like hey Minami has the decode that's what's bringing all the kaiju here and if they know that they're going to kill her you can't let that happen and everything mm-hmm. and, and Ogata's uh, time loop is actually really interesting mm-hmm. that was a fun gameplay moment because i was trying to figure out like what is actually happening mm-hmm. here he was having like groundhog day situation um, and also like trying to figure out who's actually is like contacting him and like giving him this this information and everything mm-hmm. yeah and, and um one thing that um sometimes got confusing for me is that <laughs> there's a lot of confusing but yes there there are like different love interests at points um, yes, because there's, like, different versions of each character as well. Yeah, so, like, the version in the time loop um, of Agata has a huge crush on Tomi, and, like, mm-hmm. it seems like it's pretty mutual. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then you have the whole thing of, like, Shu and Tomi when he's... Then there's, there's um like, a version of Juro and Fuyasaka that are together, but then there's also a version of Juro and Yagashiji that are together, and I was like, oh, my God, there's just so many relationship puzzles I have to put here together. Oh, my God. And then, like, the Yuki and Shu. And- it's like, it, it even, like, flies into, like, the end of the game as well. We're just like, um, eh, yeah. oh, all right, uh, I guess. Um, Sekigahara and Fuyusaka mm-hmm. are a thing. Like, I, I was just trying to figure out. I was like, who actually is in love with who here? I don't understand. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, Fuyosaka and Amaguchi learn of their past as respective clones of Morimura and Ida. Minami, Takamiya, Kisaragi, Ogata, and Mira cross paths repeatedly and end up discovering several aspects of the backstory through travels to different sectors. Hijiyama helps Okino's research and their pair rediscover the, the love their original shared in the real world. Goto pieces together several additional details and persuades Chihiro into supporting the group. Goto is the one, like, at the end, I was like, what the f*** is up with this guy? 
Yeah, because you really don't learn a lot about him throughout. Like, he just keeps popping up in weird ways. He seems very shady. Yep. But then at the end, he's just like, hello, I'm Detective Man. <laughs> <laughs> Detective Man. I must convince this small child to help us. Like, I guess, like, at the end, like, his his motivations are good and just. Yeah. Because he's wanting to help everyone get out of this, but, like. He doesn't come the, across as that. No, the whole time he seems, like, very cold and calculating and, like, he's shady? doing very shady. So I was just like, what is up with this guy? And then he just started like, yes, I am very deductive and deducing and I'm going to figure out exactly what's going on here. I have a notebook. Let me I read. have a notebook. And, she, and she, <laughs> little Shira's is like, how much stuff do you know? And he's just like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, if I were to consult my notebook. It's <laughs> great. Yeah, I had no idea what was going on with that guy for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, each arc concludes with the protagonist joining the final battle. When the demos arrive, the 13 pilots band together to fight them off. They are assisted by Inaba, who exists in a satellite orbiting the terraform planet their pods are in. They are also assisted by Chihiro, who despite herself wants to help the others survive. After a lengthy battle, the pilots fend off the demos long enough to for Inaba to contact Universal Control and shut down the simulation, allowing the pilots together with Okino and Tamao to awaken in the real world. Five years later, the pilots have formed families with their loved ones on the new planet. They restore the simulation and all its inhabitants and plan to use the pods to create bodies for the AI humans so that they can live in the real world. Inaba and Ida plan to live in universal control, while Izumi and Morimura reunite in profess their love for one another. A secret cutscene shows the self-replicating machines sent into space by Project Art have colonized at least one other planet, where the game's events are repeating with some differences. Wait, how do you get the secret scene? You go to the cutscene viewer and go to the very end. Ah, I didn't do that. It's basically it just shows like it shows the planet that they're on, and then like zooms out to a different planet, and it's basically the very beginning of the game. Oh. But you see, um, Natsumi and Ogata, and then that's it. Hmm. Kind of, it's kind of like as a secret cutscene. It's nah. nah. Um. There's also like the scene near the end that like you ha you have a the version of Juro and Fuyasaka like together. Yes, and I was like, why did they transform to their kid versions? Like that's weird. <laughs> that doesn't yeah. make sense. I mean, no. I guess it does because like those are their versions, but like I was just like, huh? All right. But also Wait. like they're not real. No. But also, I guess they can be because clearly you can bring people back. Mm-hmm. Because they bring back, like, two versions of Tamau. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, what is happening? All right, so let, let's try and keep this straight here. Cause... Hang on, I have to say something, though. Okay. My poor boy, Seki Gahara, gets the shaft at the end. Doesn't even get to show up in the final cutscene, the credits cutscene. <laughs> They're just like, oh, he's just watching over the pods, whatever, who cares? <laughs> You know, Poor he, guy. He, he doesn't get any get any fun things. He doesn't get Which to show up. Which is a bummer because like Sekigahara is one of my favorite characters. <laughs> They're just like, oh, that anti-social guy, whatever. I mean, to be fair, I would probably be off doing something on my own. Yeah, too, but I just wanted I to see what he was. Something. I wanted to see something with him. I did too. Like I said, he was one of my favorite characters. I really, really mm -hmm. liked him. Um, but yeah, he did kind of get the shaft. I was like, man, poor guy. Yeah. Um. Okay, also, so, also, again, one other thing. I, I found it very funny they came out of the pause and just didn't have clothes. Well, of course they didn't have clothes. Why did they set up a thing for, like, here's some clothes for you to wear so you're just not naked going out into the world? <laughs> this is the future, after all. Come on. <laughs> Make some self-replicating clothes that you could put on. It's supposed to be, like, Nano a Nano machines. Thing, man. I know, but, like, come on. It was just very funny. Like, there's a scene of, like, Jiro and Yakushiji together, and she's just, like, has to hold her chest so you don't see her boobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, that's not natural. No. No. Is. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, all right, so let's let's get this relationship thing straight. Okay. Okay, um, Natsuno and Mira together, yes? Yes. Which, 
good because I shipped the hell out of that the whole time. Like, he was so funny because he's basically just <laughs> like the embodiment of I'm looking respectfully. He is. What a what a good dude. Because she's wearing like the the old like gym shorts that like mm -hmm. show a lot of leg, and he's like, oh my goodness, whoa, oh, they don't do that in 1945. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But yeah, he is basically I am looking respectfully. <laughs> So them two are together. Also, they are going to implant the AI version of Mira into their nano machines. Mm -hmm. Cause sure. Because that's, that's BJ. Yes, that's BJ. Did we even mention that? Yeah. By the way, BJ, <laughs> BJ is Mira as well. <laughs> Multiple versions of characters. Yep. Um. So those two are together. Mm -hmm. Um. Yuki and Chu are together. Mm -hmm. Do I remember that correctly? Yeah. Okay. Um, which even that though, was like, great. Even though, like, she just, like, gets mad at him because he, like, he was flirting with Shidanome. She's yeah. like, well, I'm going to go hang out with our kid. Also, Yuki is Natsuno's mom in the actual reality that they came from. Yes. And, like, they're talking about, Yuki's talking about, like, her kid. He's like, you know, she keeps looking like you, Natsuno. It's real weird. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, Natsuno also and... Also, so then threw me for a loop it was like yuki's our mom yeah uh natsuno and Mira are going to go see natsuno's parents because she has to introduce them <laughs> in oh, the right. simulation <laughs> and he's like <laughs> oh. right um and i love that like yuki and natsuno are like good friends mm -hmm. even, even though like she's our mom but anyway yeah. um, yuki the coolest character in this video game Yuki's great. By far. She is a fantastic character. She shows up, beats up some delinquents, and I'm like, hello, good lord, you are the coolest person here so far. <laughs> I have I have a few favorites, and I'll eventually talk mm -hmm. about that, but but she is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so Juro and Yakushiji, they ended up together at the end, yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, I did feel like the the Juro Karabe confession to Yakushiji near the end of like one of their stories just felt very out of the blue and like out of it left really field. Did. I was just like, all right, I guess. Yeah, that okay. felt out of the blue. Because like they don't really seem. I mean, she obviously has feelings for him, but he never seems to like reciprocate that. He's also just a very awkward teenage boy. Yes, Which I, mean, I don't that, think that helps. So that is valid. And I, but I think it helps. Like once he gets like the Izumi's memories, he kind of is like able to understand. Like, oh, okay. Mm. I guess this is the thing. <laughs> I guess. I guess I like you. Whatever. Um, man. Um, Sekigahara and Fuyasaka ended up together too, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yes. Um, she, she's the one who mentions, like, oh, he stayed behind to watch the pods and everything. And then, like, Tomi's, like, all oh, that antisocial kid. She's like, ah. Which, he's so good. He's a good egg. Um, What am I missing? I'm missing some. Yes. Um. So, Ogata and Tomi. Yes, okay. They get, which is great because, like, um, so, uh, Tomi and Fuyosaka find Miwako, and they're very happy to see her, because, like, it's been, like, five years since they mm -hmm. rebooted the simulation, and, like, she's on, none, the, none the wiser, and they're just like, yay, and then Ogata shows up, and she's like, oh, hey, it's nice to see you, I have a long time no see, and then, like, he's, like, talking to Tomi about something, and she's like, well, I'm gonna go, not coming home tonight, you're gonna go home and stay with the kids, it's girls' night, and then Miwako's like, kids what what do you mean <laughs> and then Fuyasaka's like oh uh, it's, it's, it's nothing it's nothing it's nothing and she has to go over to me like you gotta calm down you can't let them know what's happening you can't let them know this much ties fast and she's like ah my bad my bad right, but yes right. I'm very happy those two I'm very happy because they had a very good dynamic mm -hmm. very good dynamic mm -hmm. um and I, I really enjoyed their scenes in the in the loop yeah um Ogatsu is very good. Ogatsu is also one of my favorite characters. I remember I, I texted you. I was like, I was going through his story and I was like, this guy just reminds me of Josuke. Because like, obviously the hair is a big thing. But like, yeah. he just has like the kind of like that characterization. Mm -hmm. Like literally Wikipedia calls him the good hearted delinquent, which yeah, of course. Yeah. And then I was like, I looked up his voice actor. And I was like, oh, it's just Josuke's voice actor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, perfect. J Josuke is arguably the best Joe Star, so mm -hmm. I mean Ogata is also really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I really liked him and Tomi's uh 
relationship and like just how like they kind of butted off each other and everything Mm -hmm. like they were i'm trying to think of the right word i can't i'm brain stupid right now um they're kind of teasing each other occasionally and yeah but like not in a mean way like it never comes across as mean, and I I, I thought that was cute. They're just kind of just like, yeah, yeah. I can't think of the word I'm looking for. There's a specific word for what I'm looking for, and I just am um, cannot. <laughs> no idea. So I don't know. But yeah, those those two, I'm glad that they had that. And I really just like that scene in the in the school where she <laughs> told me just like, oh, I'm, you're gonna go watch the kids and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, oh, he just walks away and just like, yeah, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. And then I, I really like at the like that scene transitions into the Mira and Natsunu, uh, Natsuno scene, and he just mm-hmm. walks by Mira and he's like, oh, hey, what's going on, dude? You waiting for Natsuno? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, I got that that girl that got you wrapped around her finger. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes and sees the like the the other delinquents and just like has a breakdown. It's like, oh my god, I've missed you. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Okata's so good. <laughs> he's so good. Like the writing on him is just phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And I didn't expect to like him as much as I did because he uh, originally he comes off as not as likable as I would have mm-hmm. thought. Um. Did not expect him to come out as like one of my favorites. Yeah, there you go. Point the the way to be a good character in this game, just be a delinquent. <laughs> I mean, would you consider Sekigahara a delinquent? Or uh, would you consider them delinquent? Or who? Mira. Uh, probably not. Like neither of them are delinquents, but they're very good. They're very good as well. But yeah, Ogata and Yuki are both delinquents and both yes. very good. Uh, what else? There was something else I was gonna blah 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 blah. blah. Um, we also need to talk about uh, Hiji, uh, Hijiyama and Okano. Yes, I think that was who I was going to next. I just didn't want to make sure I'd forgotten forgotten anyone. Did did uh did Goto and Shinonome end up together? I don't know. That's what I was questioning at the end because like they show up in in their cutscene together. Mm-hmm. And they go off with Chihiro together. Mm-hmm. And there was also a, a like a brief bit of dialogue in one of the fights where um Sekigahara like is like, You gotta stay away from Shinonome Goto and then one of them brings up like, Oh, you know, they those two dated in middle school. Yeah. So I don't know if that's indication that they're together or they're just working together. Because they're like very much talking about like, Oh, we you know, we're working towards this, this and this, we want Chihiro to come help us do this and everything. But I guess that's the the most up in the air one. Yeah, I think so. So you never know. Never know. But yeah, Hijiyama and Okino is probably the the last one of like the the main protagonists before we get into some of the other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, which that relationship is actually quite interesting throughout the game. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to figure out like what was going on and. I think, like, one of the things that's, um, I, I was worried it was going to be, like, all gay panic stuff. I was really, really worried about that. Right. Um, but I was also thinking, like, this guy, you know, thinks he's from 1945, and, like, that, and 1945 Japan, um, so, like, any kind of like gay relationship there might be very very taboo. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was like really having an identity crisis there. I think. Yeah. Um, and despite the fact that like he did have those moments of like freaking out of like oh god well, what is happening. I, I think he, as well like it's not just like him just like freaking out, like oh I like a dude. It's it's more also like he liked uh, Okino because he thought Okino was a girl, and then mm-hmm. Okino turns out to be a guy, and he's like what is happening? I don't know. What? <laughs> so, like yeah. that confounds everything. I think to like a another degree. It it does. Yes. Um. So, like he he has he has confusion. Um. But I mean, it is very obvious, like that they have feelings for each other. Um. Ijiyama 
definitely had more of the feelings, I think, yeah. at, at the beginning. Um, and, you know, he was he was having a real bad time anyway. Mm-hmm. Like a real bad time. <laughs> he was starving. Yep. And he had come from 45 and found out that they lost the war and had nowhere to go, had just no wanted money. wanted some yakisoba pawn. He just wanted that. And then, you know, there's an angel now. Um. <laughs> And so, like, one of the things I was trying to figure out, um, I was trying to figure out, like, Okino and what what their, like, motivations were. Mm-hmm. Um, because Okino, like, just kind of switches between, like, hey, I'm going to dress like a guy or I'm going to dress like a girl or whatever. Um, so I don't know if they're, like, gender fluid. I think if- it could be that as well, but also, like, Okino is very kind of tactical in terms of like, you know, I will use this at, at, to my advantage. Yeah. If I need to go get information, I need to do dress up like this or I need to dress up like that. So like, I think it's also kind of that, but also it's the other way as well. Because mm. literally at the end, Okino is like, hey, this is a simulation. I have, I might have different parts down there. Yeah. <laughs> to Ikijiyama, and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, 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 <laughs> So like I was trying to figure out like with with the whole thing of the simulation that jazz like do you get to choose like how do, how does this work? That's but I think I'm just future overthinking technology. It. Yeah. Um. So potentially, um, potentially there is a canon gay relationship in it that is not. I don't com- think it's potentially. I think it's very, very like, very much a thing. Well, I mean, it depends on like if if we're considering Okino like gender fluid, then then it might be more of a queer relationship than a gay relationship. But um, the, the 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 original one they had was yes, strictly a gay relationship. A- absolutely, yes. The original one they had is straight up that is a gay relationship. But you also and, have to think like Okino could just be messing with Hijiyama mm-hmm. in the simulation, so who knows? But you never know. Yeah. Um. So that was cool, and, like, they're, the old version of them, like, there was, like, it was not at all treated like a joke or anything. No, it was, it was like, like, this is very much a thing. Like, we were very, very in love. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was cool. I didn't expect that at all. I was, I did not see that coming. Yeah. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, because I figured, it, it is easy to kind of just imagine that, like, you would see this kind of relationship in this kind of game and just like see it treated as a joke yeah when in actual in actuality it's really not and i was and pleasantly I was, surprised by it yeah i was very worried about it when like he initially started having some like gay panic moments i was like oh god this is just gonna be a, a big joke like that's all it's gonna be and then it turned out to not be that i'm like all right all right all right i like it i dig it like thank you matthew mcconaughey <laughs> I mean, it, it was it was no, no, yeah. a very it was a very good surprise for me that they they actually like treated it with respect and um it was well done. Mm-hmm. Yay! Yay! Uh, and then the other two are kind of just like interesting because like I I'm trying to I'm still trying to piece together how they work. Okay. So the one is uh, Tetsuya Ida and Miyuka Miyuki Inaba. Ida's supposed to be dead dead. Yeah. <laughs> Twice dead. Yeah. But then he shows up at the end and is like working with uh, Miyuki. And he's like, yeah, I'll go up to the the, the mothership with you. Mm-hmm. We'll get this all figured out. I was like, how are you still alive? Which I guess it makes sense. Like the way they like, you know, transcribe Tetsuya Ida is like he's very calculating and everything. So like it's not surprised that he might have like backup androids with his memory able to go on the fly whenever yeah. he needs it so i guess that makes sense but like i don't really know if i needed a tetsuya ida redemption arc at the end of the game because <laughs> that guy kind of just really sucks she sucked <laughs> i was like eh, i mean i guess sure whatever like go, be, he... go be android happy with each other <laughs> <laughs> android happy he he totally like manipulated shinonome which that was a mess mm-hmm um, and I know that that was something that 
uh, you had noted in your your thing is like, oh, God, student teacher relationships, Mm -hmm. which like if anybody has been listening to this podcast for any length of time, they would know that that is something that we both really hate. Mm -hmm. Like that trope sucks. Um, And so like when I saw that, I was like, okay, so it's not it's not like you're thinking it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Um, And. I mean, I don't know that it's better that he, like, used her feelings to manipulate her, but, um, I mean, it's not better, but, <laughs> but, I mean, I guess, I guess at least he wasn't, like, romantically interested in her and also manipulating her. Yeah. Um, One positive. Yeah, yeah, so that was at least a thing, but, um, whew, yeah, he sucked. hmm Real bad. Mm-hmm. Go be Android happy together. That's great. Um, also, before I could actually like remember Sekigahara's name, I just kept calling him not Akihiko. Yeah. Because he, he looks so much like Akihiko. You can't deny that. You're not wrong. Like, put a, put a bandage on his forehead and look at him. He needs more boxing. Well, I mean, he did have a very physical mech. It's true. Like he was one of the the close up fighter mechs. Mm-hmm. So I mean, still kind of fits. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> it's ever you know he had black black guns. Pew pew. Pew pew. Uh, and then the other one is obviously Jiro Izumi and Chihiro Morimura. Yes. Which they don't exist technically. Yes. But they exist in the simulation. Hmm. Because I guess they just brought them back as well because they're like, hey, you guys helped us, cool. You can you can exist here too. And they had their like, confession because like they had existed obviously in other loops and everything. That's gotta, that's got to be so complicated. Like, there are versions of you out there that are dating versions of you that mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just messy. Especially for like, because Easyby has three versions of himself. Yes. He has um. Sheba, he has Fluffy, and then he has his actual form. Yeah. Just all over the place. All over the place. I did, like, uh, there's the, the moment where Juro and uh, Yakushiji meet up, and he just, like, he's Sheba for a second, and then he transforms into Fluffy. He's like, ugh, PDA, gross. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like, and then they, like, they have that scene, and then they transform into, like, their, their student versions of them. I was just like, huh? Why would you do that? That's weird. I, I mean, I guess, but all right. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, like I said, it, it a lot of the relationship stuff got very tangled for me at so- certain points, and um, I'm I'm glad that like ones that I ended up really liking together ended up together. Yeah, basically, like all of like the main character ones that you basically kind of figure are going to happen happen. Yeah, um, as you mentioned, like the Juro. Yakushiji one, like, that one's a little bit forced, but... Yeah, I would agree. But um, I think everyone else is, like, It's makes really well done. Sense. Yeah. And, and then we have the big question marks of Goto and Shinonome, but... Everybody else, heck yeah, good job. hmm I guess that's the shoujo parts of it. Yeah, which I think they work really well. Like, it, this is overall, yeah. like, it, it goes in just so many different pla- in places and genres and everything, but, like, I think it works overall really well. No, I agree with you, and I mean, like, you know as well as, well, you probably know better than anyone in the world, like, I'm a big old sucker for romance stuff, like, I am mm-hmm. into that, um, so that was pretty hype. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to go over some of my notes? Yes. Here, some of my, uh, so these are, so I, I did this while I was playing through the game. And it was basically kind of like just a way to like keep track of what character was doing what at what time in their story. And also just like rolling kind of just thoughts of like what exactly is happening in this game. So like I don't know. These are kind of in character order but probably kind of not. So who knows. Also like at some point I kind of just stopped because like at, near the end of the game I knew what was happening. Yeah. Kind of knew what, how it was happening. But I knew kind of like what each character's motivations were and everything. I was um, just, like I said earlier, I, w- I was reading along as this was happening, just like giggling to myself. Yes. It was great. Uh, so we got Juro here. 
mm-hmm. where I'm just like, he's he has no memories. He Got has no a future memories. self. That future self works with Boromir, and he's weird. And then eventually we get the Sheba thing. Tapes. <laughs> and then, oh my god, it's Izumi, who's Sheba. Time paradoxes? Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> And then some of this is just like plot stuff. I'm just like, all right, gotta keep this track. I did like this scene where um, he goes with Ogata to find Tomi, and then mm-hmm. he ends up finding Hijiyama there as well. And Ogata and Hijiyama are like, like, like a uh, goon squatting, yeah. And are just like, so do you know how this time travel works? No, do you? No. <laughs> that was so good. I also like that you said four, two, four, two, uh, four two six is shooty shoot. <laughs> <laughs> was it a bad body pew pew you shooty shoot yeah, yeah. The, the whole hiding in the bushes thing was great uh and then eventually you find out how izumi gets into kurabe's head and everything uh fuyasaka like she has the same dreams she loves seki gahara is borimura probably a clone of borimura or somehow two versions of her at once <laughs> i don't know she has compatibility which that was the thing that they allows them to use the gates to shift to different sectors and everything mm-hmm. um let's see if there's anything else here this version of warrior is an illusion question mark <laughs> hmm mm-hmm. I think also small of... chihiro is there because of course yep small small i have a little bit about chihiro boribura which is just like hey this is who she does and then version 1985 might be the little girl that grew up with mira question mark that's actually that's not true nope but that could have been true it could have been true if the things league were, of if, darkness? if this game was actually like happening yes the league of darkness i was like huh and then i was like oh wait that's actually not a thing that's yeah. just uh, ogata is being weird <laughs> uh yakushiji i don't know if anything she has anything here other than like oh yeah she was the only person who could see fluffy things are probably gonna go real bad for her yeah <laughs> that yeah. was that yeah that was kind of an easy thing to think but it really didn't no. She ended up shooting herself, but, like, that was kind of the bad part. Yeah. Because she had a mental breakdown. Yeah. Seki Gahara. Good boy. Gets drugs. Gets drugs. Let me see. Uh, like, Android Tomy saves him in 2104? Question mark? <laughs> Pills are used to deal with the decode? Question mark? D- this is the decode? Question mark? <laughs> Casually shoots Juro. Seki Gahara knows Mira. Mira is the Sentinel 17 AI! Yeah! Mori Mura Ida come from 2188? Question mark? <laughs> uh, Okino isn't the real Okino. <laughs> As you do. Ah, uh, yeah. Most of this is just like story beats. I'm just like trying think, to keep track of because a lot there's a lot happens in his story. Specifically. Yeah, a lot happens in his. I think the first line of Goto's is like <laughs> the most understandable question of this guy, even after beating the game. Well, that was because like I didn't know anything about him. It was just like, what the f- is up with this guy? Is my first line. It's like that's <laughs> completely true. Yep. Um, from the future knows more and lets on completely true. Mm-hmm. Knows about Morimura's clone stuff completely true. Mm-hmm. Learns about Operation Aegis true. Mm-hmm. He was giving pills to Tamao, and they really never go into why he was doing that. Yeah, I don't know. I did think at one point he was another Juro. Yeah, I remember you asking me about, or t- telling me that was Because they, they, they do have similar, like, some of the characters do have very similar art styles, and, like, they look alike. Um, so that really kind of threw me off for a bit, but he's just a dude, I guess. Also, he's the CEO of Shikishima in the far future. Mm-hmm. So that's it. Because mo- mo- mostly I don't have a lot of stuff on him, because, like... You get to do a little bit of his story, and then it could, like locks you out until like the very the end very of the end. game. Not to know, she finds BJ. Oh, well, God. I, the cats are also very excited. <laughs> Max this was, just bonked his head on the fan. Oh my God! So this was the big space thing. I was like, potentially in space with Mira in the future? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? <laughs> Wait, is the reason her and Tamala buds in eighty five because of what happened at forty five? And it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, there's the whole Iba thing, which turns out to be Android Tamau. <laughs> this is the we're not on Earth. <laughs> yeah, that was the big, like, there's a big reveal where you find out you're not on Earth. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> and then Aliens meme. <laughs> Alien- <laughs> Very 
very good. Very, very good. This is also, I think, you get the first instance of that BJ is Mira because Tamal calls BJ, BJ that. Yep. And then, like, oh, Natsuno has a deco because someone tells her that she's commanding the monsters. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, what is happening? Oh, and then, like, BJ has a thing where he says he can't see Tamau in the android's body anymore. So mm-hmm. I was like, who's in Tamau's body? It's actually yeah. Izumi. Da-ba-ba-ba-bum. But you don't know that at that point. Nope. Uh, Hijiyama is another one where you get a lot of stuff for later on. Um. He loves Jockey Soba. He had because because you had a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically I like, it. I like that you just did that all in cast is like plays in the background. Yeah. That's that's his entire story. <laughs> I mean, it's not wrong. He has a very bad day. <laughs> loves himself some Yaki Soba pond and then gets shot. Yep. Like everyone else does. Uh Shu Second one is, is also Tetsuya Ida? Question mark. TV talks to him. What? <laughs> Tetsuya Ida version. Very, very suspicious. suspicious. True. It's very true. Uh, I think this is a lot where you get into like you can transfer hum- transfer human memories into android bodies and everything, which mm-hmm. is leads me to this note that says, which means who is an android and who is it now? Gah. Gah. <laughs> um. Yeah, because he was talking about like taking the memories of Tomi that's in the android and like putting them into like her body that exists at a certain time period. She's like, "Yeah, no, you can't do that, buddy. That's mm-hmm. that's that's no bueno." Yeah. Um, this is where I thought Miyuki Inaba was Shinonome because they look similar. They but they do look similar. They do. She looks more like Shinonome than she does mm-hmm. Tomi. Uh, Juro gives him a tape that is meant for you and me, which is clearly Juro giving. Shoe memories, mm-hmm. specific memories. Juro is 426. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think this is the reveal that Izumi is 426 and not Sekigahara. Yeah, it um, is. This goes into like the Ida reviving Izumi stuff. Uh, he takes Yuki on a trip, which, yeah, heck yeah. 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 And then here's my, wait, so this is my my review of like, wait a minute, is this Tomi? Wait, yeah. would it also make sense that Miyuki is Tomi? She's an idol, Tomi was once a singer in her original time, question mark. <laughs> and I was like, ha ha. Uh, fake city time. Fake city time. There you go. Oh, I did like this scene with Ogato where like there's like having a chat and this is before Yakushiji comes to talk to Shu. And he's mm-hmm. like, they're both talking about stuff they've done in the future. And they're like, they say something, they're like, ah, yeah, you're not going to believe that. And they're like, what are you talking about? And the other one's like, yeah, you're not going to believe that. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's very good. Very good. Um, then also like the weirdness of like Ida's watching uh, Shu fly off in his Sentinel. Mm-hmm. And once she didn't know called it, I was like, how do they both exist at the same time? Shrugged shoulders. And then eventually he gets taken in by the SIU because he meets Ida. Yep. Bad things happen. Um, Yeah, here's also your reveal. Does this mean each sector the whole time has been on the same planet but represented to look like other times to f*** with everyone? Yes. That was my thing of like, this has to be a thing. Like, this, they're not time traveling. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Okino, I think, is another one I didn't have a lot of stuff on when I was doing notes. Another Mori Mura clone? This time as a guy? I think I look. I was con- I was convinced <laughs> that for a good bit because like again, similar hair, mm-hmm. and also if you're doing clothing, you know sometimes things happen. Mm-hmm. And also because like Okino can interact with all the gates and stuff. I was like, that seems like isn't that supposed to be like Mori Mura and Fuyasaka are the only ones who can do all this gate stuff? Like I feel like I have at least a little bit of like, there's an argument you could make. You for you this. have some justification. Yes. There, yeah. Uh, Mira. Good boy. He's got a scar on his head. He does. He's originally from the 40s, which is why maybe, which is maybe why Not Snow drops him off at Juro's house because it's the same house, and the she would know house. that. Yep. Yep. Also potentially related to the Mori Mura stuff, since she dumps the clone there in the 40s. Small Chihiro considers him a big bro. Wait, he's in space at some point. What? Or maybe a descendant? Also, maybe he has to deal with clones, memory transfer, and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so much going on. And then Yuki is not Natsuno's mom? <laughs> 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 A 
whole lot going on. Oh, I did like the, like, there's a point where they go back to 44 or 45, and Seki Gohara is like, hey, we fought together. You have to remember this. Mm-hmm. And then Tamao's getting her memories messed with, which I guess is what the, what Goto was doing. Why was he messing with her memories? A good question. I don't know. Goto, why are you like this? More questions there. Answers. Ogata, got that sweet pompadour. Pals mm-hmm. with Tomi. There you go. That's all you need. Yep. And he's in a time loop. Has to find the decode. Mori Mura looking for it? Mori Morris is like my go-to for like is someone shady. All right, it's probably her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he meets older Mori Mura. Like she goes through like all her versions, and then he learns like a time when she came up and shot him as a ch- or tried to shoot him as a child. That's where the League of Darkness came from. Yes. Um. He finds Seki Gahara on the train too. Learn about poison. That girl is poison. <laughs> Eventually, you learn that Oki knows the mysterious voice. He wakes up in the hideout and everything. Learns that Natsuno is the key, and he learns that Karabe is Izumi. Everything's going on. Yeah, there's, there's a lot happening there. Uh, Yuki works with the men in black, folks, which is the <laughs> SIU. My, my, my favorite note on this. Seems real cool. Hopefully, she doesn't turn out to be Yep. <laughs> she didn't. I was very happy not. about that. Because like, when they introduce her, she's working with the SIU. It's like, oh, man, I don't want her to be a cop. <laughs> she doesn't. No. She's being blackmailed. Yep. Erica Iba looks like Tamal. Looks like Shinonome. Looks like the idol. <laughs> <laughs> true, 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 and True. <laughs> Learns Natsumi was being chased by Tomi, or maybe Android version? Question mark. Girl covered in dust? Which I guess would have been Android to Mao? Makes sense. Project Arc? <laughs> <laughs> Question mark? Uh, buh, 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 buh. She ends up working with that one cop investigator guy. Mm-hmm. They eventually learn that Erica Iba isn't an actual Erica Iba because she doesn't go to the school. She's been absent yep. for like a year. Yep. They go to find Natsumi. She eventually confronts Android Tamal. And then that's where you learn that Android Tamal is Izumi. Mm-hmm. And then he gets shot and jumps off a bridge. <laughs> You're just, oh, f- Tamal is Jiro. I mean, that was a good reveal. It was a good reveal. It was a really good reveal. Uh, Shina Nome has memory loss. She knew, she knew something was up with Jiro. Or she knew Jiro was Jiro Izumi. Yep. She knows Seki Gahara. And then she's after 426, so she thinks Seki Gahara. Is it possible she's connected to Mao, or do they just look similar? I was very convinced of this, of this plot line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were. I had to make sure I remembered it. <laughs> oh no, t- teacher-student grossness. <laughs> I like that you just went Seki Gahara here. Yep. He's here as well. Yeah, he just de exists. These pills are obviously very shady. <laughs> Don't do drugs, kids. Yakushiji doesn't like her. Obs. Obs. <laughs> uh, let's see here. She didn't only blat blats Ida? Question mark? Blat blat. <laughs> Ida uh. put memories of pilots into Sentinels, which then turned them into Sentinel AIs? Question mark? exactly true but some of them did become AIs yeah uh, and then Tomi I think is the last one she's friends with these folks she come from 2025 she's very amused by 1985 <laughs> Shikishima made the kaiju Shikishima is expo- expanding to other planets perhaps why Mira and Mi- Minami were in space question mark Ogata eventually becomes a Shikishima board member question mark <laughs> but yeah that's, those are my notes yeah, they were really good, and I was very much enjoying seeing them live. I was just, like, every once in a while, even, like, at work, I would pull up the, the Drive tab and look at it for a minute and be like, hey, 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 <laughs> I mean, some of the stuff I was, like, on the right track. Some of it I clearly wasn't. But, like... Yeah, but, like, some of it you were. And just seeing your reactions, like, live, quote-unquote, yeah. which is really, really good. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Cause I know that like when I was playing this, I was just like, oh my God, what is happening? Like constantly like that. And so, um, but I couldn't say anything cause you had not played it. Um, so I was just kind of dealing with my mind blowing this all by myself. And so like, this was my way of dealing with it was seeing you have your reactions like, hey, 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 <laughs> you know now it's great. It's true. It was, it was a really good story. Really good story. I really enjoyed it. Like it, it hits a lot of like the sci-fi stuff that I like. Um, and even just goes in completely different places as well. And like, there's just a whole lot of just like mind fuckery that it just does where like, you're all, you're just still trying to figure out what's happening by the end of the game and everything. Like mm -hmm. I'm always into like stories that do stuff like that. So I'm very happy that, you know, you played this and we're like, Hey, you need to play this. And eventually I got around to play it. It took a little bit of time, but like, yeah, um, it's well worth like all the hype it's gotten and all like the, the the good praise it has received it it deserves it it so deserves it mm -hmm. i do have a question for you okay okay you have mentioned yuki um who are your favorite characters so i'd go with yuki i'd go ogata uh i'd go mira um natsuno tomi Seki Gahara. Mm -hmm. That'd probably be like my faves. Okay, very similar because Yuki, Seki Gahara, Ogata, Natsuno, Mira. I like Tomi, but I wouldn't consider her like my top tier there. But like, I think she would be like at the bottom. But like I, I enjoyed her story. I enjoyed her story too. She was she was mm. sassy, and I appreciate yeah. sassy characters. Yeah. Um. But yeah, they're they're just those are top tier, man. They're so good. Mm -hmm. They're so good. And it's funny because like the two that you really like start with, kind of bland. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, all right, guys, you just all right. These dudes are blowing you out of the water with their stories, man. Yeah, and just even personality in general. They are bland white meat protagonists. Yeah. Which yeah. is, I mean, they're not bad. It's just like, uh, there's like, they're lower tier care, like, on the terms of like where I would place them. Yeah, same. Um, I think that, like, one of my favorite things about Fuyusaka is actually her relationship with Segiyahara. Mm -hmm. Like, that was actually pretty interesting um, because he was actively like, no, no, no. Um, like he he was very much trying to protect her from that, and she's like, mm, "How about I protect myself? I'm fine." He's like, "All right, I guess." Get on my future motorcycle! Come on. I guess you're gonna confess to me, and I'm gonna be like, "I didn't say anything." Oh God, what do I do? Now I'm gonna go hang out with the pods. <laughs> I'll help you over here. I guess. Yeah. I'm glad that we have very similar tastes and favorite characters here yeah not surprising i mean basically we have the same favorite characters yeah they're very good and they are very also, good like, we are a lot alike so yeah <laughs> there's that too <laughs> oh man i really like this game it's really good it's very good and like the art you know of course it's beautiful you only have the one really problematic sprite which is the boobs and butt leather cat suit Gamer Homer's like, McGee. Gamer Homer's McGee. <laughs> she does up to everything. <laughs> um, but like the character art in, in general, like it was very, very pretty. Mm -hmm. So I was excited about that. And it was very fun to play. Yeah, I, I mean, mean if there's one thing Vanillaware can really do well, it's like good character art. Oh yeah. And good like just art in general, I should say. Yeah, their art, like their art direction is just beautiful. It always is. I was not disappointed here. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know we've sort of mentioned it, but I do want to say like the dub cast is very good. Yes. Very, very good. I would agree with that. I looked at like the Japanese cast as well when they when the credits came up for them and like a lot of like I knew recognize a lot of names, so like that's probably good as well. Mm -hmm. So you can't go wrong probably with either either or, most likely. 
some good stuff here, man. I mean, if you've listened this far, you already know all the spoilers, so of course you probably know it's good stuff, but like it's good stuff. It was a good game. And even if you did listen to this and haven't played, like there's still like you could you could probably still find like so much more stuff that we didn't get into because like good god, there's so much you could just dive into with this game. There's so much. And like honestly, if you have listened to this and you have not played the game, like the character interactions in and of itself make it worth it. Like just seeing these characters talk to each other is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like the dialogue is very, very good. And also maybe just keep a set of notes with you at at all times in case you need them. I mean, by in case you need them, I mean, because of course you will need them. I mean, I didn't take notes, but um, I appreciate that you took notes because it was very funny. Yes. Space. 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 The final frontier. (laughs) Oh, man. I'm done. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad I finally got to yell about this game. Yeah, I, I you've been bottling this up for a good bit, so I'm glad I have to able as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! It finally is out of my system. <laughs> Uh, well, that's going to do it for this week's episode. So if you'd like more from us, go to SeasonLandWeCheckup.com or SAC.Cool is where you can find past episodes, this podcast, and other podcasts like Season Landway Checkup and Jared Now Watch. And also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you want more from Anladium, go to Anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter, Twitter.com slash Anime Checkup. You can buy our books, One Shining Moment of Critical Analysis of Love, Life, Sunshine, and Hot Dubs and Pac-Man on Amazon.com. And you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash S-A-C-O-V-A. Buy us a slice of pizza, get access to bonus episodes, unedited versions of the podcast, all that fun stuff. Next week. What are we going to talk about next week? I don't know. What do you want to talk about? Uh, Good question. There's quite a few games that are coming out. Or mm-hmm. that will be out by the time this is airing. Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll talk about some of those. Cool. Maybe we'll talk about the game that has the longest title of a, of a video game this year. Oh my god, the title's so long. So long. Uh, so we'll, we'll figure that out and uh, reconvene next week. Yep. <laughs>